Hey guys, welcome to section 4.4. In this section, we'll talk about the special product formulas, or in my opinion, the greatest shortcuts known to mankind. Let's get started. So before we start using the formulas, let's see where they come from or how we can derive them. So maybe we can avoid mistakes in the future. So the very first one is for x plus y the quantity squared. And in order to figure that one out, we can write x plus y twice, because imagine there were a squared here. Wouldn't that mean that whatever is being squared is essentially being multiplied by itself? That's all you're doing here. So x plus y times x plus y. Uh, in order to follow this along, I would recommend that you watch the previous video first, if you haven't yet, on multiplying polynomials, so you understand why I'm doing things in this fashion. Uh, back to this problem, we would need to multiply x by both x plus y, so I wrote, write that here, and then we would need to multiply y by both x plus y, so I write that here. Now we distribute the x into both these terms, so x times x gives me x squared, x times y gives me xy. For the second piece of the problem, y times x gives me yx, but also remember from the previous uh, video on multiplying polynomials, I discussed an example where I multiplied 3 and 5 and got 15, but you get the same answer if you multiply 5 and 3. So even if you rearrange this or reorder the way you write this, the product remains the same. So xy is actually the same as yx. So xy plus xy will give you 2xy. There are like terms. So all we have to do is add the coefficients. Well, there's the coefficient is 1 here, the coefficient is 1 here. So 1xy plus 1xy gives me 2xy. And then the y squared just comes along for the ride. So the, the formula that I would like for you to memorize is x plus y the quantity squared. This is known as a perfect square because it's a quantity with a square on the outside. Instead of multiplying this out every single time for every problem, we have a shortcut. And the shortcut states the following. Take the first term before the plus sign. Whatever that term is, square it. And that becomes the first term of your answer. The next thing I want you to, or the formula wants you to do is multiply the two terms around the plus sign. So x times y and double that. Double the product of the two terms. So x times y is simply xy. When you double that, you get 2xy, 2 times x times y. And then the recipe, the last step of the recipe is take the last term or the second term and square it. So if you square it, you get y squared. And the reason why this works is, well, you proved it. If you multiply x plus y and x plus y, the answer always turns out to be x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So instead of going through this every single time repeatedly, if you know this formula, you can go directly from here to here. A very common misconception, which I didn't even want to write on the PDF when I was creating it, is students often write x plus y, the quantity squared, is equal to x squared plus y squared. And that's wrong. That's incorrect. The textbook mentions this multiple times. I've mentioned it in class, mentioned it in class multiple times as well. So the reason why it's wrong is because it's missing this middle term. You cannot distribute this power to these two terms as long as there's a sum or a difference here. The only time you can do that where you can apply this power to both the x and the y is if you have a product or a quotient. This was one of the rules that we discussed earlier in, uh, I believe, section 5.1 when we were starting exponent rules. So that's the formula for x plus y, the quantity squared. The formula for x minus y, the quantity squared, works and comes out very similarly. So we write down x minus y, x minus y twice, and we have a product in the middle. And again, we do the same thing we did above. We split this x into x minus y, and then we split the minus y into x minus y as well. And if you were to multiply these two things, x times x would give you x squared, x times negative y would give you negative xy. Negative y times x gives you negative yx. Negative y times negative y gives you positive y squared. At this stage, remember from above that negative xy is the same as, sorry, negative yx 
is the same as negative xy. So these two are like terms, so I can combine them into a single term. So I finally get x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And that's the formula. So the recipe for when you have a minus in the middle of a perfect square here, x minus y the quantity squared, the recipe you have to follow is square the first term, minus, multiply these two, get the product, and then double it. So minus 2xy plus square the last term. Please, please, please memorize these formulas in the words. So memorize the recipe. If you know the recipe, you can write this down for any variable. But just knowing the formula and not what it means is basically useless. I hate to say it, but you're wasting your time by doing just that and nothing else. The third one that we're going to see quite frequently is a difference of squares. That's the name. I, I should have written it at the beginning instead of the end. But So what happens if one of the terms in the product is a positive and the other one is a negative? Well, we come up with a formula that looks different from the two that we have in the past, which is why this one you know, gets its own name. And even though it's the easiest one to use, unfortunately, it's the most abused. People use it incorrectly and do all sorts of bad stuff with it and to it. Uh, it's really a terrible sight. So we start by doing the same exact thing in the last two examples we did. x times x minus y, y times x minus y. So we start off by splitting it off. x times x gives us x squared. x times negative y gives us negative xy y times x gives us yx, y times negative y gives us negative y squared. Now again remember, yx is the same as xy. When we multiply, the order of the terms does not matter, it's irrelevant. However, one of these xy's is negative and the other one's positive, so they actually cancel each other out. A negative one and a plus one uh, gives us a zero xy, which essentially is just zero, so they go away. So all you're left with is simply x squared minus, and then you're left with a y squared here. So this product, x plus y times x minus y, condenses to the difference of squares. And hopefully you understand why it's called this. Difference because there's a minus sign. Squ difference of squares because this thing is a square and this thing is a square. So you have a difference of squares. Next page, I believe I have some examples. Ah, so this I already mentioned up above in the previous page, but it's very important to memorize these formulas in, well, I didn't mention this part, in both directions and in words. So the words I mentioned already, for this particular formula, I have it written in this direction above, but you should know it in this direction as well, because they're the same formula. It's a two-way street. If you can go in this direction, you can kind of go back to where you started from as well because of the equal sign. So the formula essentially states you square the first term, multiply the two terms and double them or double the product. So you multiply X and Y and then double it. And then finally you square the second or the last term, which is this term. So let's run into a couple of examples. So let's say we have three A plus 4b the quantity squared. Now you can sit there and foil this out, but just trust me on this, this is so much faster. And you might not be able to see the value of this here, but when we get to chapter six and I give you this problem as the original question, and I say factor this, in order to go from here to here, using the formula is gonna take you five seconds. Excuse me. If you don't know the formulas, the ones that I shared up above, this is going to be a beast of a problem. So let's follow the recipe. The recipe says, take this term and square it. So 3a the quantity squared, I wrote it right there. Plus the product of these two terms, so 3a plus four, or sorry, 3a times 4b, and then double it, hence the two on the outside. Finally, plus square the last term. So 4b the quantity squared. Now we have 3a, the quantity squared. That means I have to apply this 2 to both the 3 and the a because there's a product in the middle. Or another way to think about this is you're multiplying 3a by itself because it's squared. 
So 3 times 3 is 9, a times a is a squared. Plus, well, we have these three terms to multiply. So three, 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24, so I have 24. And then a times b is simply ab, nothing I can do with that. Then I have 4 squared is 16, b, the quantity squared, is b squared. So again, you might say, you might still not be convinced that this is still slower than, than foiling and that you can do it faster. Well, let's take a look at the next example. And let's see if we can follow the recipe in our head this time around. So we have 5pq plus 7rs, the quantity squared. The formulas that you learned here, or this particular formula, let's look at this. This does not mean that it only applies to the variable x and the variable y. X and Y are simply placeholders. They're buckets that you can put whatever you want inside. The, for, the greatness of the formula is in its generalizability or in its extendability. Whatever the first term is, all you have to do is square it. So if it's a single number, square it. If it's a, a number and a variable, square it. If it's a number and two variables, like in this problem, no problem. The formula does it all. So. The recipe says square this first term, so 5 squared is 25, p squared, well, is p squared, and q, the quantity squared, is q squared. So I already have a third of my answer without having to touch foil at all. The next term is plus, and the reason why it's plus is because the original problem has a plus in it. And you multiply these two terms, so 5 times 7 is 35, 5 times 7 is 35, p, q, r, s, and then we double that. So 35 times 2 is 70. So my middle term is 70 pqrs plus square the last term. Well, 7 squared is 49. r times r gives me r squared. s times s gives me s squared. So let's take a look at some examples for the second formula. So we start with x minus y, the quantity squared. And you'll notice that this is almost the same formula as the one we used above with one small difference. And that difference is the sign on the middle term. If we go back to the one we had above, the 2xy had a positive sign. And in this case, the 2xy has a negative sign. So the algebraic terms remain the same. The recipe remains the same for x minus y the quantity squared as it was for x plus y the quantity squared. The only difference now is, instead of adding the 2xy term, we have to subtract it. The x squared and the y squared, both those terms remain positive. And we can do this in both directions. So let's see if we can do this with a couple of examples. So the original example we had was 3a plus 4b, the quantity squared. And the way we got the answer was, well, you can follow the example above, but the answer was 9a squared plus 24ab plus 16b squared. Now, if you were not using the formula or if you did not have the knowledge that the formulas yield the same algebraic terms with one sign that's off, well, then you wouldn't be able to do this as quickly. But let's say we were to use the same recipe again on 3a minus 4b, the quantity squared. Well, then you have 3a, the quantity squared, square the first term. Instead of a plus, a minus, multiply these two things and double them. So 2 times 3a times 4b gives us this. And then square the second term or the last term. So 4b, the quantity squared. And when you do evaluate all these products, you'll see that you get 9a squared minus 24ab plus 16b squared. Funny that we see that because it's the same exact thing we got with the plus. And the reason again for that is that these two formulas are the exact same. I'm trying to get them both on the same frame. Well, let's say I can't. The formula for x plus y the quantity squared is the same as the formula for x minus y the quantity squared, except for the sign in the middle. So if you know the answer to 3a plus 4b the quantity squared, 
All you have to do in order to get the answer to this problem is switch the plus to a minus. The terms remain the same. I hope you're starting to see the value in knowing these formulas and knowing the, the methodology behind them or knowing what's happening behind the scenes because this can save you so much time and effort. Even though foiling is something that you've been doing probably since middle school, this really is the, the next level up or the next stage of doing things more efficiently. A couple more examples. If you have already solved this problem of 5PQ plus 7RS the quantity squared and we have the answer from above, in order to get the answer to the same problem but with a minus sign in the middle, just change the sign on the 70 to a negative and the answer remains the same. So if you were to FOIL this out and FOIL this out, I guarantee you there's no way you can do it nearly as quickly as we were able to do both these problems. So here's a new question just to see how we can use this formula from scratch. Uh, because with these ones, we could have just used the, the knowledge that we have about the formulas and how they're off by a single sign. But let's say I give you this problem to begin with. So you have to evaluate 2x minus y the quantity squared. We square the first term because that's what the recipe tells us. So 2 times 2 is 4 x times x is x squared. The middle sign is a negative, so I put a negative here. I multiply the two terms, so 2x times y is 2xy. Double that, so 4xy. And then square the last term, so y is squared. And that's my answer in one step. I don't have to foil, I don't have to muck around with multiple signs, I just get the answer in one single step. The last couple of examples are examples of the last formula, which was this one. x plus y times x minus y yields x squared minus y squared. There is no way anyone is ever going to convince me that they can foil faster than doing what we're about to do here. So let's say we have 2x plus y times 2x minus y. Notice that these two signs are not the same. One is a plus and one is a minus. This is how we know that we can use the difference of squares formula as opposed to the, perf the first two formulas, which, were, which are typically called perfect square formulas, but th that's not a standard notation. So we have to square the first term. That's what the recipe tells us. So we get 2x the quantity squared minus square the second term. We squared the second term. So if you square the first, you get 4x squared. Square the second, you get y squared. And that's your answer in one single, easy, harmless, painless step. Now what happens if I swap the, the order of these terms around? So what happens if the minus is first and the plus is second? Well, it makes no difference. Remember, 3 times 2 is 6, and 2 times 3 is also 6. So it doesn't matter which order you multiply the terms in, the solution is always the same, or the product is always the same. So if, you, if someone says, you know, what is 2x minus y times 2x plus y, and you've solved the problem with the plus first and the minus second, well, the answer has to be the same. It cannot be something different. Remember, when you multiply, the order of multiplication does not matter. It's irrelevant. Finally, this is just a summary of when to use which formula because usually at this stage, people start to mix them up and use them incorrectly. But if you have say 2x plus y times 2x plus y, notice both of these are positive. If they're both positive, I can combine both of these into a single perfect square. So I can write this as 2x plus y the quantity squared. If both of these terms are negative, 2x minus y, 2x minus y. I can combine these into a single term and call it 2x minus y, the quantity squared. And by the way, in order to multiply all of this out, instead of foiling, I could just square the first term, multiply the two terms together, and then double it, and then square the last term. If the problem has a plus sign in the middle, like this one does, the 2ab sign, the sign on 2ab is positive. Whereas if the problem has a negative sign in the middle, the 2ab term in the middle is negative. That's it. 
Now, if you have 2x plus y and 2x minus y, I guess another way I could have written this was 2x minus y and then 2x plus y instead of the question mark. Didn't think of that, even though I did it right here. But you get the idea. There is no way to combine these into a single power because the two terms are not the same. They're not identical. So if they're not identical, but the individual terms are the same, so 2x, 2x, y, y, one of them is positive, the other is negative, then I can combine these using the difference of squares formula and just use that. And that is done right here. Please make sure you practice a whole bunch with these formulas. They're crucial to your understanding of not just material in chapter five, but also chapter six. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out.